So in this video, we're going to be looking at the um, frost line in the solar system. And this really is a powerful idea which describes planet formation and distribution of chemical elements within the solar system. So let's just start off by painting a picture of the solar system. So let's start off with the with the sun over here. And now apologies with the terrible uh, drawing, but you know, we've got um, Venus, uh, Mercury, um, Earth, Mars, the asteroid belt, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, um, then we've got Uranus and uh, Neptune, uh, and then we've got poor old Pluto all the way out here. Now, um, the Earth is at 1 AU, and AU just means astronomical unit, and it's arbitrarily defined as the average uh, distance from the Earth to the, to the Sun. Um, and we can measure all the other planets in relation to um, in relation to the Earth. Um, so it's quite a nice arbitrary unit, unit of measure. So Mars sits about 1.5 AU. Bear in mind this is just the averages because the planets don't have a perfectly circular orbit around the Sun. Jupiter sits about um, 5.2 AU. Saturn is around about 9.5. Uh, and then these very quickly become further further out. Now the frost line, and we'll talk about what that is in a second, what it means. So it's just about here. It's um, it's beyond the asteroid belt, but it's just before the orbit of um, Jupiter. Okay, and this is the um, frost line. And what this means is that this is kind of almost an imaginary boundary in the sense there's nothing physical there, but it's the limit at which simple molecules um, can condense. Um, so things like ammonia, water, dinitrogen, hydrogen sulfate, carbon dioxide, methane, all these kinds of elements and chemicals, they will, beyond this line, so this side of, of the ice line, they will condense this side there will exist as a gas they might be saying well hang on a minute we're on earth all the way over here and we've got liquid water that's condensed right it's not a gas yet yeah, true but on earth we've also got the pressure of the atmosphere which um which decreases the or sorry increases the the boiling point of water the point at which it goes into the into a gaseous state so that age-old experiment, if you go to the top of Mount Everest, the boiling point of water is lower because it's got a lower pressure. Therefore, it will turn to a gas at a lower temperature. Now, when we talk about the condensation of, of, of these volatiles, we do mean at vacuum level, so in space. Now, when the solar system formed, um, the sun was a lot hotter. So, well, OK, let's go back a step further. Let's assume that when the solar system formed, it was just um, a massive cloud of of uh, gas and dust. And slowly, gravity pulls all of the gas and dust, or not all of it, but a vast majority, into the sun, into the center of this spinning protoplanetary disk. And that creates a lot of gravity. Um, and that gravity eventually builds and builds and builds, pulls more stuff in until the sun has got so dense, it's so hot in the middle, that fusion starts. And then we get a period in time where you've got a lot of um, solar winds coming out, which will push away a lot of the um, volatiles in the inner solar system. Right. That's why we don't have any any gas, gaseous cloud anymore, because it pushed it away. But by that point in time, we would have had all, all the water and everything condensed out in this part of the solar system. So you've got much bigger planets because they've had more time to clear out the the volatiles in their path and also they've got bigger orbits so they've got more volatiles to collect and eventually over time these collected all, all the all the material in their path and we're just left with the planets but not only do these have less material to begin with but the solar winds would have stripped away all the volatiles in this part of the solar system so you would have had some very dry rocks not many volatiles not much water no real atmosphere and over time, from the Oort cloud outside of Pluto's orbit, we would have had comets come into the inner solar system. 
and every so often one would cross the Earth's orbit. Now, this is a very poorly drawn orbit, but you get the idea. And it would hit the Earth, and that would bring water and volatiles towards the Earth. So that's really all it is. The, the frost line is this kind of arbitrary line where this side of the frost line, we get things like water condensing to, to be um, a liquid or, or, or a solid. And this side, they will exist as a gas um, and can be blown away by the sun. There you have it. Thanks for watching.